Welcome! Today I'm going to be doing a demonstration of a Decatron tube and how to interface a Decatron tube to a microcontroller. This particular tube is a Russian uh, OG4 Decatron tube. Now, these Decatron tubes are an interesting uh, bit of history. They were used in the 1960s for counting applications. So typically there are 10 uh, primary cathodes that go around in a circle. And uh, one of the primary cathodes, the cathode 0, is hooked up to a single pin. And cathodes uh, 1 through 9 are hooked up to another pin. So you could detect each time it spun around and um, ignited cathode 0. And you could use that as a signal to the next part of your circuit to um, signal that you had counted 10. So for example, you might want to increment the next tube if you had a multi-tube counter. Um, the, between each primary cathode are two guide cathodes and the two guide cathodes are used to move the arc from one primary cathode to the next. So you pulse them in a certain order and you can cause the arc to first jump to the guide cathode then jump to the next guide cathode and then it will jump to a new primary cathode. Now let's see how we go about interfacing this. This is where I insert a small caution that high voltages can be dangerous in any project that uses either house mains current of you know 120 volts AC or more or uses vacuum tubes or high voltages should be treated with appropriate caution. Now let's get on with trying out some Decatron tubes. The first circuit that I'm going to demonstrate is a simple Decatron spinner. You can find these circuits on the internet. They operate directly off of main line voltage, so it's got 120 volts DC going into the uh, side of the circuit board. And it uses some capacitors and diodes to step that up to an appropriate voltage for the anode of the Decatron. While at the same time using some resistors and capacitors to form a circuit that operates the guide wires to the Decatron, causing it to spin at a rate that's proportional to the 60 hertz line current. You can't really control how fast it goes around. It's just sort of a decorative item. So let's turn the light off here so you get a little better look at it. That is the Decatron spinner spinning around. Turn the light back on. So, we want to uh, take two steps to make this a little bit easier to deal with. The first step is we're going to get rid of the 120 volts main current and go to a switching power supply. This switching power supply is diagrammed on my website and it runs off of 12 volts on this side, 425 volts comes out on that side. It's a TL494 integrated circuit, an IRF840 uh, MOSFET, and an inductor there. So we've got 425 volts coming out we need to uh, reduce the amount of current going into our Decatron. So on this board here, we've set up a voltage divider and a current limiter. So the current limiter is this right here. We've got a couple of 180 kilo ohm resistors, total resistance of 360 kilo ohms, going from the 425 volt supply over here and into the anode for the Decatron tube. That's just a simple current limiter. Over here we have a voltage divider. So we want our guides, the two Decatron guide pins, to be at about 30 to 60 volts below the uh, cathodes. So one way to do that would be to generate some negative voltage. A much easier way to do it is to take the cathodes and just move them up to plus 30 to 60 volts. So that's what we've got here. Right here we have a 180 kilo ohm resistor going to our 425 volts. We also have a 22 kilo ohm resistor going to our ground. That's going to take the cathodes and drive them at approximately 22 um, over 180 times 425. It's about 50 volts. So our cathodes will be about 50 volts higher than our guide pins. That's important because the guide pins need to be driven lower than the cathodes. And finally, we have our two guide pins hooked up to a couple little push buttons that we can use. It's a very simple circuit. So we will push these in order. We'll go one, two, one, two, 
one two one two one two one two two one two one two one two one two and in that way we can make this thing go around in a circle if instead I go two one two one two one two one two one two one, two, one, two, one we're going in the other direction and if we just kinda push it around at random we can just get it to do some funky things back and forth so that's how easy it is to control the Decatron let me uh, shut off the light so we can see it in the dark one two one two one two one two I'm going uh, down down up up that's one two one two two one two okay so now we have our Decatron under microcontroller control this is a parallax propeller microcontroller and it has uh, something called a prop plug over here which is our programming our uh, in-circuit programming interface to the laptop we used to program it little uh, EEPROM to hold the program for the propeller and our Decatron interface circuitry so we did away with the buttons that we had and instead we're going to use a couple of MPSA42 transistors to switch the signals to the guide wires so the base of each transistor is connected to a 22k resistor going to one of the pins in the propeller so we're using pins uh, 14 and 15 the uh, emitter of the transistor over here is connected to ground and the collector of the transistor is connected to the guide pin on our Decatron so we're running a little very simple program which I will show the listing in a moment and the program what it does is it steps each pin for 100 uh, milliseconds so it is turning this one on for 100 milliseconds this one on for 100 milliseconds then it turns this one back off for 100 milliseconds, this one back off for 100 milliseconds, and repeats. And that is causing our circular pattern. So I could change those step rates down to 10 milliseconds. You end up with a faster Decatron. Bring it down to 1 millisecond. Very fast Decatron. 1,000 milliseconds. very slow Decatron now well, one thing we can do is we can uh, set the guide pins to go very fast like uh, let's say for example one millisecond on the guide pins and a hundred milliseconds on the uh, overall stepping so now what we're seeing is a Decatron actually working the way it was intended the guide pulses are actually very short and what you're seeing here are, is the uh, the ten, uh, the ten primary cathodes operating. So let's slow it down even more so you can see each one of the ten cathodes. You can't even see the guides there happening uh, so quickly. And that is a Decatron connected to a microcontroller. By switching the uh, two pins I can easily switch the direction of rotation very easy thing to do, very easy circuit to build. So now we're going to take a brief intermission and look at the propeller program that we're running. The propeller tool color codes everything for us, so the top section in yellow is the constants and the clock mode and uh, X in frequency, those determine the uh, speed the propeller chip itself is running at based on the crystal and the uh, PLL loop that is that is selected. Below that we've got some constants that can define our uh, Decatron application. So there's the guide milliseconds, that is the duration that we pulse a pin on or off. And the step millisecond is the duration that we wait at the bottom of our main loop. And I think those were evident in the little demo. P1 and P2 are the two Decatron pins, so we're using uh, pin 14 and 15. And then we look at the main function, it simply calls DECA spin test. Now DECA spin test, the first thing it does is set our two pins to outputs. 
the propeller can have them either configured as inputs or outputs. Obviously want, we want outputs because they are driving the transistors. Then we go into a repeat loop here and the repeat loop first it raises the first pin then it waits for a guide millisecond time period then it raises the second pin, waits, lowers the first pin, waits, and then uh, lowers the second pin and then it waits for a total of the guide millisecond and the step millisecond. So by varying the guide and the step times we can either get the sort of continuous display where you saw the guides lit or you can set guide milliseconds really low and have the sort of coarse grain display where you just saw the main cathodes lit. And finally, just because I already had some buttons wired up to the board, I decided to hook them up so we can control the speed of the Decatron via these buttons rather than having to use a laptop to change the speed every time. So I can push this button, we can speed it up. This is speeding up the step time. Slow it down, speed it up. And over here we can control the speed of the guide pulses. So there, I've slowed the guides down. If it's slow enough, you can actually see guides working their way around in a circle. And speed it up and make it go really fast. So that is a microcontroller controlled Decatron.